Here it is, the absolute beginner's guide to 3D modeling for 3D printing in Blender 2.8. Blender 2.8 is fantastic, and I want you to learn it. I'm serious about that. This set of videos isn't just to be watched and be entertained by. I want you to have these videos on and be following along as you do it. So if you've got a mobile device, maybe you should be watching these videos in the mobile device while you follow along on your computer. If you have a second monitor, move this video to the second monitor and, again, We'll follow along as you go, or if you don't have either of those as an option, just go ahead, put this video in the background, and just listen to the sweet tones of my voice <laughs> as we work on this. I will do my best to go at a moderate pace and be explicit in my cues. They will be both ver verbal and visual here on the screen so that everybody can follow along. And remember that you do have speed control over videos, so if I'm going too fast, you can always slow me down just a little bit. But let's, let's jump into this. First thing I want you to do, go to blender.org, download Blender 2.8, install it and run it until you see this screen i'm serious pause the video until you do those okay good let's get to it now this first screen that you see in blender kind of sets the stage for blender a little bit it says you can make blender your own and that's lesson number one in blender it's completely configurable if you don't like the way blender looks or works or does what it does you can change it and it starts with these couple of settings now don't sweat these settings if you make the wrong choice now and there's no wrong choice but if you make the wrong choice now you can always change it later so let's go over these settings real quickly how do you want your shortcuts configured? You've got three options here, new blender, old blender, and industry compatible. So if you're coming from like Maya or 3D Studio Max, then maybe you want to choose industry compatible. But for me, I'm going to stick with blender, new blender on this one. Do you want to select with the left or right mouse button? Why would anybody want to select with the right mouse button? Old blender selected with the right mouse button. So Maybe you want to do that, but myself, I'm going to leave it on left mouse click because that's that's the sane option, right? Now, here's one option that I'm going to make a change on. What do you want the space bar to do? Normally, by default, you hit the space bar and it plays the animation, but... I'm not going to do a lot of animating. When you're modeling for 3D printing, you really only need one frame most of the time. Now, uh, search here, the search function, hitting space and typing in a command and finding it that way is the way old Blender worked. But new Blender puts that under the F3 key, which again is kind of the normal choice for a lot of applications. So I'm going to switch this to tools, even though... I don't really know right now what tools is. I'll find out later. And then the last thing, I'm going to switch it to a Blender light theme because that's easier to see on YouTube. Let's go ahead and hit next. And here's the main menu that you're always going to see when you come into Blender. Don't worry about it right now. Just click off of it. And now we're looking at the default scene. And you can change this default scene. Again, everything's editable. But in this default scene, on the left here, we've got this kind of strange pyramid shape here. That's a camera, and it's pointing at the cube, which is in the middle. And this cube is lit up by a light source here on the right, that kind of circle on a big, long stick. That's a light source. Everything you need to start rendering. Something to render, something to render with, and a light source to illuminate it. We don't need any of these things for this discussion, so we're going to delete all of them. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to show you how you find commands in Blender. So first thing I want you to do is click on that camera on the left there, and then notice in your 3D view over here, on the upper left of your 3D view, we've got a couple of menu options here. You've got view, select, add object click the object menu and you could search through these if you're searching but down at the bottom there you'll see delete click delete and boom our camera is gone now there's another way that we can delete things do you notice way over here on the right of your screen 
is the outliner view. So upper right, way up there. There's a list. This, this outliner view lists all the objects that we have in our scene. And we've got a cube and a light left, right? Because that's what we've got left. We deleted the camera. You can organize things in the outliner. It's really cool. And we'll get to that more in the future. But for now, I want you to right mouse click on the light and see the little menu that pops up. Choose delete in that menu. And boom, the light source is now gone out of our 3D view right here. Now, last one, we got to get rid of this cube. And I want you to click on the cube. And then we're going to use a hotkey for it. In Blender, the hotkey to delete is X. And you might say, well, why isn't it the delete key? Well, okay, the delete key will actually work in Blender 2.8, but I want to show you something about the X hotkey because this happens a lot in Blender. Let's check it out. Hit X, and you'll notice that underneath your mouse pops up the delete menu. So all you have to do is click and delete. The object. Now, I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to move my mouse off of there so that the menu disappears. And this time, I'm going to move my mouse somewhere else just to test it and hit X. And now that menu is under my mouse way over there. Isn't that pretty cool? Blender with these pop-up menus puts them in such a way that you can easily get to what you're doing. So let's go ahead and click delete and boom, that object is gone. Again, we could have used the delete key, but it doesn't pop up the menu when you use the delete key, and I wanted to show that to you. Now we need to add a new object. Now we're going to use that menu in the upper right. Do you see the add option there? View select add object, hit add, go to mesh, and then go to monkey. Monkey is a great object, especially for this lesson, because we need it to look different from the side, from the front, from the top. So we're going to use the monkey. Next, I want to teach you how to navigate around the view, how to look at things from different angles, because the lesson here is we are trying to do 3D with 2D tools. Your screen is flat. It's 2D. Your mouse only goes up, down, left, and right. It doesn't go forward and backward. Okay. So we need to figure out a way that we can navigate a 3D world with 2D tools. The first lesson I want to teach you, though, is how do we restore ourselves to the default? If while you're orbiting your view and panning your view and doing things, you mess up and lose track of everything and, and you freak out, don't worry, we can put it back to a nice central location. And here's how we do it. In that menu up there, you see view, click it. Let's go to, I believe it's navigation. No, it is a line view. That's the menu option there. And you, you could just search through them. And that's kind of what I did here. A line view and then center cursor and view all or shift C. So just remember shift C, that will solve your problems in the future. But let's click that in the menu right now. And do you see, boom, it centered our view on the monkey. We'll, we'll try that again in the future. But if you run into problems while we're doing this, just remember shift C will get everything back into your view. So the first thing I want to teach you is how to orbit the view or look around. And I'm trying to show you that those menus over there have everything that you need. So let's take a look at that view menu and let's go down this. What we're looking for is in navigation. And you see in navigation, we have orbit left, orbit right, orbit up and orbit down. And those are assigned to numpad four, numpad six, numpad eight and numpad two on your keyboard. There should be a number pad on the side, and this number pad is used in Blender for navigating the view a lot. Let's just click one of them. I'm going to click orbit right, and you notice that the view turned a little bit to the right, but not very much. So let's use the number pad real fast. Let's hit six, 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 and even let's just hold it down and watch that monkey spin. Let's hit four and watch it spin. Let's hit two and eight and watch it spin around. So we've learned how to orbit our view, but this is okay. This is okay, but this is maybe not the, uh, well, there's other options. Let's talk about those other options. Notice in the 3D view on the upper right of the 3D view, right there, <laughs> straight up if you're looking at the cube, but in the upper right of your 3D view, there's a tri-colored compass. It's got X, Y, and Z on it in red, green, and blue. What I want you to do is just 
left click and drag on that. So left click, hold the mouse down and drag around and check it out. We're orbiting our view freely. We're able to navigate our view this way. Really cool. Now, there's one other way to do it. And this is this is my favorite way. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel on it and I'm scrolling the wheel now and noticing that it's zooming in and out. So I I accidentally discovered how to zoom here. We can use the mouse wheel and zoom in and out. But that mouse scroll wheel is also a button. So if you press and hold that button, so keep your mouse pointer over the 3D view and hold down the scroll wheel and then drag, you will orbit the view. You might have already known that, but for those who didn't, if you click and drag the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel, then you can orbit the view. And this is my favorite way. I kind of like being able to just orbit the view quickly like that. Now we did very briefly discover that we can zoom in and out. And that's an important feature to know. You can also zoom in and out. Do you remember that 3D compass in the upper right of the 3D view? Right next to it, there is a zoom icon. Click and drag that zoom icon and move the mouse up and down or even try left and right. Doesn't do as much left and right, but you can move it up and down. And there you can have your zoom. And remember, if you get lost at any point, if you mess up your view, Shift-C will recenter everything for you. There's one last way to zoom, uh, well, two, but we'll find them in the View menu in the upper left-hand side. So View, Navigation, and Zoom In, Zoom Out looks like it's assigned to the NumPad Plus and the NumPad Minus. So let's give those a shot. NumPad Plus, NumPad Minus. You've got options. And I'm not going to tell you which one to do. But I like to use the scroll wheel whenever I'm zooming, and then I like to use that scroll wheel as a mouse to orbit. Okay, so we've got orbit, we've got zoom. We need to cover one other very important way to navigate our view, and that is, well, to snap it. Sometimes we want to work with something exactly from the front, exactly from the top, exactly from the side. And how do we do that? Well, let's go up to that view menu again. And this time under viewpoint, and you'll notice that we have a top view and a bottom view, front view and a back view, and that's assigned to seven, control seven, one, control one, three, control three. So let's try those out now. Just click any one of those that you want. I'm going to go ahead and click top view, and boom, we're in the top view. But remember, that was the numpad one, three, and seven. So start playing with one, three, seven, three, one three, seven, and remember control did the back. So if we do control seven, it's from the bottom. Control one is from the back. Control three is from the left and three is from the right. Control three, three, control three, three. That's kind of fun. Now there is of course another way that we can navigate or snap like this. That 3D compass up there, go ahead and orbit your view to an odd angle so that we'll see the change. And do you see that 3D compass? It's got a blue Z, a green Y, and a red X. Click on the X, the Y, the Z, the dot with the X and the Y. I'm going to click on the dot with the Z, and boom, we're in the top view. I'm going to click on the dot with the Y, and we're in the back view. I'm going to click on the dot with the X, and we're in the side view. I'm going to click on the dot that is opposite the Y, but doesn't have a Y on it, and now we're in the front view. And if you click on the dot opposite the Z. So get, try clicking on those dots. You might discover that if you actually click on the dot in the middle, that it flips to the other one. So that's useful to know. If you hit Y and you're like, oh, that's the back, click it again and it'll be on the front view for you. So that's a great way to snap your view. We've got one more thing. One more thing that we need to cover. And this one I think is, is, uh, very important. It's called panning. Sometimes in our 3D view, we have more than one object and we want to change which one we're centering our view on. In camera work, this is called panning. It's about moving the camera around without changing the tilt of things. And like I say, it allows you to focus your view on a different object. Now, the way that we pan, let's go up to that menu navigation again. View, okay, navigation, and pan left, pan right is control four, control six, control eight, and control two. So let's just click on one of those just to watch it work. 
I'm going to hit uh, pan right. I don't know. I tend to like the right. And again, if we had to do the menu every time, that would be crazy. So we'll hold down control and hit six and four. I will say that four and six kind of work backwards the way that I would expect it to. Hmm. In fact, up and down works backwards. Why is that? That's because we're not changing the object. The object is staying where it is. We're changing our position relative to it. So when we hit control four, we're moving to the left, which is making the object look like it's going to the right. Cool? So that's why shift or control eight moves us up. Now we can also pan with that compass two icons over from the side there's a hand icon click and drag it and there we are we're panning our view it's a pretty good way to do it now there's one more way to do it i'm going to hit shift c to recenter my view again and that is with the mouse pointer again so again with that middle mouse click that's kind of the trick to all of our viewport navigation but hold down shift and then middle mouse click and drag oh it's not shift is it control oh hold on let's try it again it is shift okay i was right the first time but i had accidentally moved my mouse to the wrong screen sorry about that so shift middle click does our panning for us so that we can pan our view around and i kind of like that one the best okay i'm going to hit shift c to put it back in the center so that's it for today just navigating the view and i suppose we also learned a little bit about adding a new object and we also learned a little bit about deleting objects but here's what i want you to do for practice for your homework at the end of this video, what I want you to do is orbit the view any way that you want and try and get it lined up as much as possible to, we'll, we'll start with the front view, and then try to remember the number pad key to hit, to snap it to the front view. And let's see how close I got it. See if I can remember it now. Aha, I got it. Now, it did a strange thing with the view, and that was because it went from being perspective to orthographic. We'll talk more about that in the future, but I think I got it pretty close. Now I'm going to try top view. And do I remember the key combination to get to the top view? Do you remember it? All right. Now, try side view, try bottom view, try back view. I want you to try orbiting to different views and then using the key to snap to them quickly. And I want you to keep going until you can get five in a row correct and make sure you're not just doing the same one over and over again. That's let's let's not cheat ourselves. Let's do the best that we can. And so five in a row, if you can remember those keyboard combinations, I'm I'm building a muscle memory for you. You want to switch to the back view, you learn to use this key. You want to switch to the front, you learn to use this key. Maybe after doing that, you'll realize, eh, you know what, I'd rather just do it with the on-screen controls. That's fine. You have that option, but I want you to practice it and see if you can build that muscle memory. It really is the fastest way to know how to do that with the keys. So give it a try a little bit for me and, and Tell me in the comments if you like it. But that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to manipulate objects in this world. We're talking about moving them around, making them bigger and smaller, and changing their direction so that they're rotated a different way. So I hope that you'll look forward to that, to lesson number two on the beginner's guide, the absolute beginner's guide to 3D modeling for 3D printing in Blender 2.8. I need a shorter name for that. And if you would like to come by on uh, Twitch TV on Monday mornings and enjoy some Blender modeling with me, start your week off right with some Blender modeling. I'm on Twitch doing that at 3DP Professor, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys there. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and remember, safety first. See ya.